Hello, my name is James Bezik and I'm a developer advocate here at AWS Serverless. AWS recently announced EFS for Lambda. Amazon EFS is a fully managed elastic shared file system designed to be consumed by other AWS services such as Lambda. With this release, you can now easily share data across function invocations. You can also read large reference data files and write function output to a persistent and shared store. EFS for Lambda makes it simpler to use a serverless architecture to implement many common workloads. It opens new capabilities such as building and importing large code libraries directly into your Lambda functions. Since the code is loaded dynamically, you can also ensure that the latest version of these libraries is always used by every new execution environment. In this video, I'll show you how you can use this new feature. So first of all, I'm going to do all this from a Cloud9 instance in my account, and I'll git clone the repository with all of the examples. If I open this repository, in here you'll see five different examples, and there's a readme file that has instructions to go through. I'll be following most of the instructions in this video. First of all, go to the setup folder and open up the CloudFormation YAML file. This shows you everything you need to create a brand new VPC subnet and an EFS file system and a mount target. You don't need to do this if you want to use an existing VPC or you have your own EFS system you want to use. But if you want to create one entirely through CloudFormation, this is the file you would need to just copy and customize for your own use case. At the bottom, there's an EFS access point resource that you use to create the access point in CloudFormation. So let's deploy this CloudFormation template to see how this works. From the readme file, there is a CloudFormation deployment command we can use. Just note in this command, the template body should refer to a file resource if it's a local file. When we execute that, we immediately get a stack ID back. Now going to the EFS conf console, what you'll see is there's now a test file system that's been created by that stack. Also, if I go to VPCs in my console, I'll see there's also a second VPC that's just been created as well. The first one is not the default and the second one is the default, so I can tell it's the first one immediately. I'll take a copy of the VPC ID, which I'll need later for deploying other applications. Now you can also find these resources through the console as well. If you type in uh, EC2 describe VPCs, this command will tell you the VPCs configured in that region. Again, you can see which one is the new one because it's not the default VPC that's created by default in your account. So what I'll do here is I'll just take a copy of the VPC ID so we can use that later. We need all of these resources for deploying some of these Lambda functions later in these examples. So I also want to get a list of the subnets attached to this VPC, and I can use the CLI to find out which subnets are created. This filters by that VPC ID. Now I can also use the same command and change the output to make the subnets more readable. I just add this query parameter on the end, and this will give me a list of subnets that I can just cut and paste directly for my SAM deployment later on. Finally, we also need the EFS access point, which is an ARN. So if we just run this command a little bit further up, you'll see the access point ARN, which we'll need when we're deploying Lambda functions using a SAM template. So I'll just copy all these down. You don't need to create all these from scratch, but definitely if you're using my templates, you'll need these to add the parameters later for your default VPCs and subnets. So let's look at the first example, a vanilla Lambda template that you can use for customizing your own serverless applications. Here, all the parameters are specified up top that take the security group, subnets, the EFS path, and the access point ARN. These are all the values that I copied down just a moment ago. This is a very simple example where it's a vanilla hello world function, and it has an API gateway event to, attached to it. The most important changes you'll notice in these types of functions are you have a VPC config and a file system config attached to it as well. And there's also some permissions added in the policy section as well. So you could take this vanilla template and customize this for your own EFS functions. Now to deploy this is fairly simple. We'll just cd into that directory and I'll run sam build. That just runs the package.json package library in there. 
and then run the run sam deploy dash guided. This is the new feature in SAM that lets you just run through a wizard to provide the answers. So I'm going to call this one sample EFS app. I'll run it in US East 1. I'm going to copy and paste those values I copied down earlier. So I'll put in my security group ID and then I'll put my comma separated list of subnets. Then I'll, I'll accept the default EFS path and then finally my access point ARN. Paste that in there. And I'll just let it make changes without confirming. Just accept some of these questions. Yes, that's fine. And I will save those arguments for later. So this deploy is just like a regular SAM deployment. It takes a couple of minutes. So when it's finished, what you'll see is it's successfully created in US East 1. Now from here, if I go to the Lambda console, what you'll see is the deployed function very first one there, sample EFS. I'll just open this up. And what's different about this compared to a regular function with deploy with SAM is you'll see that the VPC settings have been configured, taken directly from the template, and also the EFS settings have appeared as well. So this function is now attached to EFS and to the VPC, and it's mounted at, at mount forward slash EFS. So in the large files directory, there is the template YAML file for the application. This takes several parameters, such as the name of the video, which we already have in the directory there, and also the EFS mount path and the other parameters we saw earlier. There's one single function, a process file function, that runs for up to five minutes. And it uses a Lambda layer that includes FFmpeg, which is a utility for processing video. It takes a couple of environment variables there, and again, you see the VPC configuration and the file system configuration, which you'll see in every function that's deployed this way, along with some of the IAM statements required. So we'll deploy this application running SAM build as before. This is pretty quick, and then I'll run SAM deploy guided again. This time we'll call this stack name large file example. Run it in US East 1, accept all the other defaults. And I'll just paste in those values that we captured at the beginning of the video. Along with my subnet IDs. Okay, and then we'll just accept some of these defaults and let the application get deployed. Now this takes just a couple of minutes. When it's finished, you'll see it says successfully deployed. If we go back to the EFS console, what you'll see if you open up the file system we created are a set of mount instructions you can use to connect it to EC2. But you can also connect it to, cl to Cloud9 because that's also running on an EC2 instance. So I'm going to take these instructions and move them off the screen. And I'll run them here to mount this EFS uh, location directly to my Cloud9 instance. Now notice this is freezing and not doing anything. The mount command's not doing anything. So one thing you have to do is make sure that you have access to the same security groups. So from the EC2 menu, go to change security groups and just make sure that security group is added to your Cloud9 instance. As soon as it's been added, you can close this down, go back to your Cloud9 instance and just try the command again. I'll just control C and then we'll retry that command. And now it mounts successfully. So we've now mounted the EFS file system to a, to a directory called EFS. I'm going to move the video MP4 file from my local Cloud9 instance directly to my EFS directory. So now if I CD into EFS, you'll see that the video is now in the EFS mount. Now the app.js file, which is the Lambda function, if we scroll down, this is what it does. Basically the Lambda handler simply runs an ffmpeg command to open up this video file and extract one frame per second for the duration of the video and store that in the EFS mount. You can run any command this way using this exec promise function you see at the top there. This takes two environment variables, the input file and the EFS path for it to be successful. So over in Lambda, if we look at this deployed version of the function, you'll see the environment variables there pointing to the EFS mount along with the MP4 file. 
So let's test this. I'll just uh, maximize this and click on test. This will run this Lambda function. Now this takes a couple of minutes because it's going to be going through about 30 minutes of video and extracting one frame per second. But it's writing those files back as JPEGs into the EFS mount. So if we go back into Cloud9, I can show you these JPEG files being created. I'll just run ls cd into the EFS directory. And all these JPEG files have been created by the Lambda function. And if I just count the number, you'll see there's roughly 300 or so, and that number keeps growing. Now once this process is finished and the Lambda function is fully executed, if I open up the execution details, we can see it ran for 75 seconds there. And now if we look at how many files, there's 947 files in total, and you can see all of the different JPEG files that are now in our EFS directory. Okay, so let's take a look at the fourth example, which is how to zip all these up. So we've got all of these separate JPEG files, and we want to zip them all into one zip file. So I'll just CD into the fourth example, 4-zip. And in here you'll see there's a template YAML file, as each of these examples has. Let's take a quick look at that file. First there's an app.js file. This is using a library called Archiver to take all of the JPEG files and just create a single zip archive from all the separate files. This is using default settings for this particular library that you can find in its npm library page. And there's the EFS path it's taking as an environment variable. Now in template.yaml, we have the usual set of parameters that define the VPC configuration and access points of the EFS mount. And then the function itself is just going to be doing the archiving. So let's do SAM build again. This installs all the necessary packages needed for this application. And once again, we'll do a SAM deploy to deploy the application into the AWS cloud. So I'll call this stack zip files demo accept a couple of the defaults that are suggested. Then I just need to paste in the IDs that we captured at the very beginning that are unique to the VPC configuration that I have in my account. Let's paste those in, along with the subnet IDs with comma separated values and the access point ARN for my EFS mount. Don't need to accept any of those changes and then just let it deploy as normal. This just takes a couple of minutes, and when it's finished, we'll see it successfully created and deployed. Now, if I go to my Lambda console, you'll see there's this new function called zip files demo, which is the one we just deployed. This is going to zip up all of these JPEG files that we created in the previous example. You can see the environment variables have been configured. And now all we need to do is hit test to invoke this function. I just need to configure a test event, and then hit test, and it starts executing. This will take a little bit of time because it's zipping up hundreds of different files. But once it's finished, I can click on details to see what the result of the execution was. And then go back to my EFS mount. I can show you, the, show you that the zip file has been created. So there's all the original JPEGs that we created. If I just CD into the previous directory where we mount, mounted the EFS volume, and I'll ls, you'll see that video.zip file is now there running at about 9 megabytes. So that's how you zip files up using an EFS mount. It's actually very simple with an NPM package. The key thing is to configure your application using all these parameters in your SAM template. So that concludes our brief introduction to EFS on Lambda. Visit the URL on the screen for these examples and links to other resources as well. Meanwhile, please feel free to leave any questions in the comments and thank you very much for your time.